In this video, I want to give an overview of how we normalize a wave function, because it's important that we're able to do it. So we came up in the last video with this form of the wave function, where we have our normalization constant a. Now, we haven't done anything about finding that value yet. But remember, we said that we can identify the probability of finding the particle in a given space. We can't find an exact position because of the uncertainty principle, but we can quantify the probabilities in a given region of space. But we first need to find this normalization constant. Remember we find the probability related to the square of the wave function and the normalization constant is vital in this. We can find the normalization constant from the total probability of finding the particle in the box. Remember it has to sum to 1 which allows us to find a. And once again a reminder, psi star is our complex conjugate. In the last session we showed that we could find the value of a but we didn't explain how it was found. That's the purpose of this video, to guide you through the process of finding this value of a. The first step in normalizing our wave function is to find an expression for the area underneath the curve. We need to integrate the square of this wave function. Remember, the particle has to be in the box somewhere, so the integral over the whole box is equal to 1. So that's our probability. Remember we said before the probability is the integral between two limits of the square of the wave function. When we do this over all space, we find that the total probability is 1, for the integral between 0 and L, remember that's the entire length of the box, of the wave function squared with respect to x. Now we're going to quickly rewrite this to simplify things a little bit. We're going to take our constant out of the integral because it has no relevance on the integral itself and all we're worrying about is the function inside. Now be aware of the notation here, the sine squared is equivalent to sine all squared. Okay, we just need to integrate this However, we do need to do a substitution for sine squared kx. The direct integration of this isn't a trivial integral. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the double angle formulae. You'll be aware of these from school, but we're looking for one which has sine squared kx in it. When we look through, we find that we have an expression for cosine of 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. You're probably wondering, where does the theta come from? It's just a general term, and we can substitute whatever that might mean, whatever we need. We can rearrange it to make sine squared theta the subject, and we end up with this expression. When we substitute this into the integral, remember we've got the half that's coming from because we've got the 2 sine squared theta here. When we substitute this into the integral, we end up with this expression, which looks much easier to integrate. We just integrate stepwise. The half, again, is a constant. It can come out. 1 integrates to x with respect to x, while the cosine integrates to a sine function, we find we have an overall definite integral between 0 and L of this. If you're having any difficulty with this, just go back to what the derivative of sine kx would be, and you'll be able to find out that if you differentiate this, you will indeed get cosine of 2kx. Okay, our next step in normalizing our wave function is to use the limits x equals 0 and x equals L. So let's use our definite integral. And all we're going to do is we're going to substitute the values of L in and subtract from that the values where x equals 0. So let's do the first one first. We have our first value, our endpoint. Put the value of L in for x, substitute this in, and then we subtract where x equals 0. Now it's useful at this point to have a look at the value of k. k is n pi over L. So let's first look at what's happening here. Well, we have 0 minus whatever it is in here, but we have sine of 2k times 0. That means everything in this bracket is 0, meaning that sine of 0, remember, sine 0 is 0. This whole bracket cancels out to 0. What's going on in this bracket? Well, 2k times L. Well, let's work that out first. What is 2k times L? 2k times L is simply equal to 2 n pi over l times l. The l's cancel, which means we have 2 n pi. If you remember from the definition of sine functions, if we sketch a sine function, remember n is a quantum number, which means it's an integer. So that can be 0, 1, 2, whatever. So we have multiples of 2 n pi. And the sine of 2 pi and 4 pi 
will all be equal to zero. So this sine function goes to zero as well. If we identify the terms going to zero, we end up with zero, zero, and ultimately we end up with one is equal to a squared over two times L, which gives us our final value of a is root two over L. Let's look at the final wave function. Our final wave function contains a normalization constant a, that's this root two over L. It contains a wave vector k, which is this n pi over L. And this is the final form of our wave function for the particle in a box. We've built it up from logical principles. We've looked at the boundary conditions, which tell us the wave vector k. And we've considered the probability and the fact that we have a certainty of finding the particle in the box, which has allowed us to find a value for the normalization constant. If we're presented with a situation where we want to find the probability between two limits, all we simply need to do is remember the integral, go back to the integral, substitute in the limits x1 and x2, and that will give us our probability of finding it in this region of space. Make sure that you can follow through the logical steps to these results. It's important that you're able to determine these values from first principles. And remember that integrating between two limits gives us the probability of finding our particle within given limits.